In this video, I would like to demonstrate how we can use a fairly simple method for getting a non-simulated object, in this case the cube, to follow a simulated object, which in this case is a torus that is being dropped into a flip tank. So the basic setup I have here is that I have, um, I created the flip tank from the particle fluid shelf right here, flip tank, and then I created the torus and I set the torus to an RBD object. And I just made a couple tweaks to get the torus to float a little bit better in the DOP network that was generated with the flip tank <laughs> from the particle fluid shelf. In here, I went to the flip solver. And in the flip solver, I came over here to volume motion solver and I set the feedback scale to one. It's set to zero by default. So if we set it to one, we get a little bit better interaction in the object that we're dropping into the fluid floats. But this, this isn't really a fluid simulation tutorial. This is about how we can get another object to follow the simulated object. Now we have very straightforward parenting in Houdini where I can just wire the parent into the child, but that, that won't work in this case. If I wire these two together, the cube will still not follow the simulation of the torus. So what I need to do is modify the information that's coming into the torus geometry node. So if I go to the torus geometry node, now these are the, these are the other two nodes we need to set up. So I'll just kind of put those out of the way for now. So if I go to the DOP import, remember this is where the motion is being brought back in and applied to the torus. So although this is a flip simulation, it's not unlike rigid bodies or particles or any of the others. So we have the DOP import, and then the import style is fetching the geometry from the DOP network. But that's actually not what we need. We just want the motion of this object so we can apply it to the, in this case, the cube, but this could be an imported object as well. So what I can do is change my import style to create points to represent objects. So if I select that, now I also have my point display on right here. So if we look at that, there's a little blue point right there. And if I scrub the playback head, we can see it follows the motion of the torus. It's basically the centroid of the torus, the center point. So then what I could do is I can apply a very basic methodology to get this cube to follow that point, I can use the copy to points node. So if I right click in here and just type in copy, I can get a copy to points. We use this node a lot for modeling, but here's a situation where it comes in handy for simulation. So I wire in my DOP import node that has the create points to represent objects. So that's basically putting in an animated point that is animated based on the flip fluid simulation. Then I can bring my object that I want to actually follow that point, in this case, the box, or you could do an object merge or an object import in here if you'd like. And then we wire that into the first input, which is the uh, primitives to copy. And then that gives us this result here. Now, let me come back up to this level and get rid of the original box that we don't need this box up here. So that's not where we're bringing it unless we import it here. Then we do an object merge into the torus node. You know, there's a couple different ways to get to this, but I have just the box right in here. And you see, as soon as I do copy to points, it snaps to that location and now it's going to float with it. So uh, a pretty straightforward and quick way to get a non-simulated object to follow the motion of a simulated object.